how are you doing? Do you know what? When I'm reading this to you, I do try and think about who might be listening. And I reckon there may be a Charlie or two. I'm thinking an Anya. Maybe a page and a Rosie. Oh, an Isla. Oof. I think you need to shout your name at the screen. And I'll have another go tomorrow, see if I can tell who's listening to the story. Okay, we're on chapter 28. And Tam's still missing. Polly and Varjak have just gone through the cat flap. And oh, remember Cludge, they made a friend of the dog, didn't they? He couldn't climb the wall. Poor old Cludge. They're in the Contessa's house. Let's find out what happens next. Chapter 28. They emerged in the corridor. It was empty. The cat door clicked shut behind them. Polly turned to it at once, nudged it with a paw. It stayed shut. Let me try, said Varjak. He pushed, but it wouldn't open. It had locked from the inside. So you can come into this place, said Holly, but you can't leave. The gentleman must have changed it, said Varjak, a knot of tension growing in his stomach. This wasn't a good sign. He looked around the corridor. The thick green windows were closed, the lace curtains drawn. It looked normal, except that, like the garden wall, everything seemed much smaller and older than he remembered. The faded rugs, the scruffy furniture. Compared to the city, it was more like a display in a shop window than any real place. The silence made it stranger still. There were none of the city sounds here. There was no one about, either. Not the family, not the gentleman, not those black cats of his. Yet it smelled strongly of cats, as if there were lots of them very near. His whiskers tingled. This wasn't right. Where were they all? Varjak and Holly shook the rainwater from their fur and moved stealthily along to the hallway. At the top of the stairs, above the musty carpet, the Contessa's door was closed. Varjak pricked up his ears. He could hear something up there. A long, low, mewling noise. But further down the corridor, he thought he could hear cats talking. I'll look upstairs, whispered Holly. You check out down here. In case I find them, what do your family look like? Varjak paused. A bit like me, he said, but different. Be careful. Run if you see a man or two black cats. They're dangerous. Holly headed up the stairs. Varjak edged along the corridor. He tried to empty his mind of thoughts, as Jalal had said, so he could shadow walk. But it was no good. The thoughts kept coming. Where were the family? Were they all right? Would they be glad to see him, or had they forgotten about him already? He could clearly hear voices now, coming from the front room. The door was half open. He crept up to the edge, where he wouldn't be seen, and peered in. There they were, the Mesopotamian blues, alive and well. Relief flooded through him. He wasn't too late. He hadn't let them down. There was no sign that they'd been hurt, no sign of the gentleman or his cats. It looked like a family council was in progress. But it was Julius who sat now on the Contessa's red velvet armchair. The others were clustered around, fiddling with their collars as they listened to him speak. What was going on? I don't care, Julius was saying. But things like this don't happen for no reason, said Father. Shouldn't we try to find out what it means? Hang on, I'm going to say that in the Father's voice. But things like this don't happen for no reason, said the Father. Shouldn't we try to find out what it means? I'm the head of the family now, said Julius, flexing his muscles. Does anyone have a problem with that? There were a few mutters around the room, but no one replied. Varjak couldn't believe his eyes. Things really had changed since he'd been away. Julius was acting like a gang boss. 
It looked like he'd done to father what father had done to the elder poor. If we all agree, said Julius, then the council is over. Barjack took a deep breath and stepped into the room. They turned to stare at him as if he was a stranger. Barjack, said Mother, is it really you, sweetheart? Look, everyone, he's back. At once they cleared a space for him, surrounded him with silver blue fur and green eyes. Barjack, poor, we thought you were lost forever. He's grown, hasn't he? Welcome home, Varjak. Home. Finally he was home. He looked around the family circle. They were purring and beaming at him. Mother, father and Auntie Jeannie, Julius and Jasmine, Jay, Jethro and Jerome, they all seemed so glad to see him. It was good to be back. Where have you been, son? said father. Outside. And the elder poor? Varjak shook his head sadly. Gone. Varjak, I'm sorry, no, Julius, stepped between Varjak and his parents. Things have changed since you disappeared, he said. I'm head of the family now. Father was for a while, but now it's me. He stuck his chest out as if to underline the point. He was bigger than Varjak remembered him. He'd grown taller. His body had thickened and become more powerful. His collar was tight around his neck. He looked extremely well fed. Varjak glanced at father. He seemed tired and old next to Julius. It was obvious who would win in a fight. Perhaps it had already happened. Congratulations, said Varjak to his big brother. That's not all that's changed, began father. No, things are better for us now they've, than they've ever been, interrupted Julius. He pressed something down between his paw. It, beneath his paw, it was the toy mouse. The gentleman's been very good to us. Him, said Varjak, his cat killed the elder paw. There was a gasp around the room, but Julius just looked annoyed. You're lying, he said, raking his claws across the mouse. It had become ragged. Its fur was wearing away. The gentleman loves us. His cats are our friends. Why would they do a thing like that? They wanted to stop us going outside. Well, there's your answer, said Julius. They were only trying to help. If you hadn't been doing something wrong, Barjack bristled. It was Julius who was wrong. Barjack knew he was. But Julius could always make his lies so convincing and Varjak couldn't find an answer fast enough. Now, now, said Mother, Julius is right, Varjak. The gentleman still feeds us wonderful food every day. As for his cats, Julius shot her a look, and she coughed. <clears throat> well, that's enough of that, she said quickly. But just look at you, sweetheart. Haven't you grown? And those scars on your face, you've changed so much I hardly recognise you. What scars, said Varjak and remembered Ginger, and Razor, and Sally Bones. He smiled. The world outside had left its mark on him. Well, I've had a few fights. A voice like milk in the morning purred in his ear. Cousin Jasmine. Why, Varjak, you're not a little kitten any more. Varjak's ears perked up. He'd always liked Jasmine more than the others. He'll always be our kitten, said Mother. She licked Varjak's coat, smoothed his fur. He didn't object. He let her warm tongue wash away the rain from the storm and the city's grime, let her strip him of the smell of outside. That's right, said Julius, glowering at Jasmine. He's still a kitten. So what's it like outside, asked Jay. What happened to your collar, said Jethro. And how do you get those scars, said Jerome. I'll tell you, said Barjack, though Julius was now glaring at them. I'll tell you everything. That's the end of that chapter. Oh, I'm glad that Barjack's back at home. I'm glad his family is safe. I'm not very keen on that Julius, though. But I wonder what had been going on with the gentleman. We will find out very soon. I hope you're very well. I hope you're going to have a good day, or you've had a good day.
whichever way around it is, you're having a good day. And whatever you're doing, I hope you're just doing stuff to get you through at the moment. It can be quite tricky having to stay in a lot. And I think we're just having to take every day as it comes. That's what I'm doing. Just getting through one day at a time. So for today, just know I'll be thinking about you. I've got a list of all your names. So keep thinking. Hope you're okay. Can't wait to see you all again. Remember you're very precious. Be good. And I will see you again soon. Thank you very much for listening. Do you know what? I really like reading this to you. It makes me feel connected to you all still. So thank you for listening. And I will read another bit to you very soon. Bye for now.